The human body is a marvelous mechanism. Science knows it comes from stardust. How can dead dust transform into a living human body? Hello. Welcome to The Explanation with Sam Canella. This episode, The Human Body, Incredible Complex Dust of the Ground, comes from the book Mind Body Problem Solved and is brought to you by TheExplanation.com. The Human Body incredible, complex dust of the ground. The human body sends shock waves through science with its intricacy and coordination. The brain, the central controlling organ, is a marvelous headquarters. Words cannot describe the interconnectedness of the human brain. The book, Mind-Body Problem Solved, asks the most fundamental question. Does the brain, or any other organ or group of organs, generate consciousness and mind? Answer that query first, with certainty, and we're on our way to a solution. In the last chapter we saw the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. That's Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. The potter fashioned the exquisite human body from dust. This chapter explains what the fascinating human body is. The amazing shell all human beings inhabit, if I can put it that way. All we need to do is add nutritious food, fresh water, and normal movement, that's less computer time, and it'll run for around seven decades. Unfortunately, today we mistreat our human bodies enormously, but that's another story. The explanation has written extensively about our human bodies. The human body composed of stardust defies imagination. We take it for granted. Almost 8 billion on the planet function identically, yet each one is unique. How can that be? For lack of space, to find out more about the wonders of our bodies, Please refer to these articles and sections in Inventory of the Universe. Human Life Bodies Alive Brain and Mind There are so many unexplained, incredible systems going on in the human body like proteins synthesized from the very amino acids they generate. Which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Another marvel is protein folding. Just watch the amazing short videos. The split-second construction of a motor to run a specific function in your body, like a filter to allow only certain elements through the cell wall into the nucleus. When I wrote that book, the revelation that stunned me was apoptosis, the programmed death of cells in the human body. You see, when a fetus develops in the womb, we don't realize that cells are dying in specific locations at just the right moment in order to fashion fingers and toes. Programmed cell death takes place in a baby's brain before birth. The University of Maine tells us, a fetus brain produces roughly twice as many neurons as it will eventually need, a safety margin 
that gives newborns the possible chance of coming into the world with healthy brains. Most of the excess neurons are shed, that's apoptosis, in utero. At birth, an infant has roughly 100 billion brain cells. Your brain, an impressive body part. Your brain is multitasking hundreds and thousands of functions right this moment, and every moment, without rest. In fact, your brain doesn't even relax when you are asleep. We function better after a good night's sleep because the brain continues to process the input received while we were awake, sifting, sorting, reinforcing what we learned, and allowing us to recall the information later. Each action or sense, no matter how trivial, affects our neurons and activates synapses that we can see with neuroimaging. All these actions, like feeling hungry, holding an apple, trying to guess what time it is, are given high, medium, or low priority and coordinated with all the other involuntary or voluntary actions taking place within our bodies. You may think the coordination of New York City or Beijing traffic is complex, but your brain is capable of integrating all the sensory information, mental processes, and motor skills you need to drive a car in rush hour and help you reach home safely. If a colony of weaver ants coordinating the building of a nest awes you, or a herd of wildebeest migrating long distances in Africa, or the vast internet network with about 5 billion people and the interconnected transmission of all the messages, email, and web pages. Consider that your brain's 100 billion neurons and the routing paths for your physical and mental activities act with split second precision and coordination. The number 10, followed by hundreds of zeros a number far greater than the total number of atoms in the universe, expresses the gargantuan quantity of neuronal circuits for communicating information. We've never imagined these sheer numbers of neurons or their speed, let alone the organization and coordination needed to make our body and brain run smoothly. It's stupefying that all the wiring and connections are overseen by your brain. Your brain is 1.4 kilograms of jelly tissue, of which 78% is water. It fills a space of 1,130 cubic centimeters in your skull, which is equivalent to a small balloon with a diameter of 13 centimeters. Imagine right now that 20% of your oxygen intake and 25% of your glucose consumption fuel your brain. Compare this with the size of the infrastructure and the energy input required to run the Internet or the world's most sophisticated supercomputer. Pause for further thought. And consider that this three pounds of jelly tissue is incredibly fluid and responsive, more so than the fastest internet connection. The human body and brain are exquisite. What is the composition of the human body? The amazing body, with its 78 organs, systems, and networks, including your brain, runs perfectly in sync. But don't forget, God formed it 
and it's nothing but dust. You are from dust, and to dust shall you return. Quite a well-known Bible verse from Genesis 3, verse 19. What does it really mean? If you ask someone what the Bible says about the composition of humans, I think the general answer you get is of the ground. That's not far off, but it's not exactly right. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust. That's Strong's H6083. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Why did Yahweh choose dust? and not the ground. Because coming from the dust teaches us several characteristics, not just of man, but all humans. Let's first see the biblical Hebrew and how the King James translators rendered it. Strong's H6083 Afar Dust as powdered or gray, hence clay, earth, and mud. And the King James Version translations, ashes, dust, earth, ground, mortar, powder, rubbish. There is a vivid contrast that God wants humans to understand. Our origin is in stark contrast to the life-giving mist and rain in the verses preceding verse 7, that is, in verses 5 and 6. The dust is in stark contrast to the breath of life he was going to infuse and the living souls he formed we'll get to a much deeper explanation of the breath of life and living souls. But dust is dead. In dust, there's no life. On day six, God said, Let the earth, not the dust, bring forth the living creatures. Of course, God created the animals. But even the fauna comes from living matter whereas humans don't get that distinction. We come from the dead dust of the ground. Humankind begins rather austerely, even compared to animals. Did you notice the last word in the KJV list of translations for H6083? Rubbish. That's pretty graphic. Nehemiah 4, verse 10 says, The strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish. That's Strong's H6083. So that we are not able to build the wall. That's what we humans are, what we humans do. Here's another piece of the puzzle you can assemble in this context. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Please understand that the intention is not negative but we have to call a spade a spade. Humans start from an inferior position, in some ways lower than animals, because they came from the ground. Dust is synonymous with rubbish, unclean things, and filthy rags. 
The human story starts from the most humble origins, but includes potential far beyond animals. We'll get to that in the rest of this verse. Yahweh, man's creator, could have used ground or wood or grass to form the human body, but he used dust. The explanation has just given you a reason for this choice, but there are other reasons. In the list of verses containing the biblical Hebrew word for formed, that's Strong's H3335, read Isaiah chapter 44 verses 9 and 10 and see what humans form. Idols from molten metal and other materials including clay like a potter. Isaiah 44 verses 9 and 10. They, humans, that make, and that's the biblical Hebrew, H3335, the same as formed. They make a graven image, all of them vanity. Sam's comment. This corresponds to the dust, rubbish, and filthy rags. They that make a graven image are all of them vanity, and their delectable things shall not profit, and they are their own witnesses. They see not, nor know, that they may be ashamed. Who has formed, that's again, H3335, a god, or molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing. God formed humankind from dust, and humankind turns around and forms valueless graven images from dust, instead of forming things to glorify our Creator, humans form anti-gods. The human body is sophisticated, complex, strong, and delicate. At the same time, it is just dust from the ground. Our brains are intricate and complicated dust. Consciousness and mind are elsewhere. This episode is brought to you by The Explanation Bible Institute. Unlock Bible Meaning with seven keys to master biblical Hebrew, a proven method to grasp the God-given original meaning of Scripture, available at theexplanation.com. Keep seeking answers to the big questions in life and reveal the explanation.